Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report, brought to you by Red Ritter Outfitter, the fans' favorite since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Well, mighty Joe, Texas Tech had that open week. They did not play last weekend. I think it was much needed after six in a row, including five ranked opponents. Now Texas Tech, three and three overall, one and two in the Big 12 takes on fellow three and three overall, one and two in the Big 12 opponent, West Virginia. Here at the Jones, 2 p.m. Saturday, and the game will be televised on FS1. Man, West Virginia's coming off a pretty impressive victory over Baylor, and they had some a little bit of time uh, since this upcoming game because they played on a Thursday night. But what are your thoughts uh, about the Mountaineers? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, a funny team because uh, if you look at them statistically, they look better than their record. I yeah. mean, there's, there's not – a whole lot of weaknesses on this team from a statistical standpoint. Uh, it looks like they should be pretty good, and you know they are pretty good, but they're not great by any stretch. I mean, they got absolutely well. It was an overtime game, but they lost by 13 points to Kansas at home. Yeah. Uh, got beat up pretty good by Texas. Yeah. You know, uh, they lost to Pitt on the road, which is it's a rivalry game, and Pitt was ranked at the time, but they're yeah. still kind of so-so. Uh, but then they had the good win against Baylor. Uh, so they've had some success and some ups, ups and downs, a little bit like Texas Tech. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a kind of a hard team to get a, a grip on as to, um, you know, just how good they really are. Texas Tech has had a lot of success, three straight wins against West Virginia yeah. after having lost, I believe, five straight. So this yeah. is kind of a streaky series. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, but I think this is a game that Texas Tech could actually get something done on the offensive end. Yeah. Uh, now, now, I'm not saying West Virginia's defense is bad. They're not. Uh, they stop the run very well, uh, and they get after the pass rusher. I mean, we this is a broken record. Big 12 teams rush the passer very well. That's right. just the way it is. Yep. And uh, West Virginia is no exception. They have 13 sacks on the year. So that you got that to worry about. But uh, West Virginia, if you can keep your quarterback upright, uh, they're a little bit suspect in terms of pass defense. Uh, and uh, they give up a lot of touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, so, uh, now, so I think this is really what it comes down to for Texas Tech. Is, uh, and this is where if we assume that Baron Morton is the guy, uh, which may be a safe assumption, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, but if he is, uh, then that sort of uh, ability to escape that he demonstrated against Oklahoma State, get out of the pocket, uh, read the rush, uh, and get rid of the ball very quickly, uh, that could come in handy again uh, in this game. So we'll have to see how that goes. And hopefully, you know, you get some improvement out of your offensive line. Uh, but I believe that if Texas Tech can, uh, can do reasonably well in terms of pass protection, they can get, there's going to be some opportunities to get some stuff going down the field. And uh, if that happens, uh, Tech could roll up some points in this one. Yeah, I agree on that. I think this this is an opportunity for Texas Tech's offense to really explode. Like you said, put some points up on the board against a suspect pass defense. Now, there's a lot that goes into that. Let's start with what you alluded to with the quarterback position, that Baron Morton is likely going to be the starter. Well, I asked Coach McGuire about the health of the quarterbacks earlier this week. He said both Donovan Smith and Baron Morton are you know healthier than they were maybe even expecting that right. they were going to give more an extra day, but he still went and he actually got outside the pocket some in practice on Sunday and looked good. He said Donovan Smith was healthier and he had been in a while after getting that, you know, open date, that bye week, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that, you know, he also didn't want to say, you know, who the starter was, which I understand, but he did say that Barron received most of the first team reps. Uh, Zach Kidley kind of said something along the same lines too when asked about the quarterback position. So I am expecting Barron to be the guy. I, I really am. And if that's the case, I, you know, here on one hand, I expect Tech's going to put up a lot of points. But on the other, it's just his second start. I know he looked great against Oklahoma State, but that's just college football and football in general is just not that nice and neat. You know what I mean? It's a week-to-week -week proposition. West Virginia's going to have a different scheme than Oklahoma State, so, and there's tape on them. Sure. So, uh, what are your thoughts about just the quarterback position and, you know, possibly Barron making his second start against West Virginia? Yeah, uh, if he does, uh, as you say, there's no guarantee that he's going to be successful again. Uh, we've got to be realistic about that. Right. Uh, that's entirely possible. Uh, there's just not enough on Barron Morton to really say for sure that we can be, you know, dead certain that right. he's going to go out there and just tear it up. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. We'll just have to see. Uh, now, having said that, um, you know, I've been – 
sort of a supporter of Morton for, for a long time yeah. before the season started. Uh, you know, I thought that eventually he was going to start for this team. Uh, I believe in him, you know, and uh, what I saw uh, against Oklahoma State just sort of confirmed, uh, you know, what I suspected. Uh, so, you know, I'm on the BM Express here, you know, I'm not, not, not going to lie. Uh, I think he's going to do well here, and uh, that's not to say that if he is the starter long term, he's not going to have his ups and downs, right. bad games, everybody does. Right. So, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, um, I would be really, really excited to see what he can do if he gets another start. And my gut feeling is um, he's going to get the job done and uh, people are going to be pretty happy. Let's go to the other side, the other quarterback, JT Daniels. Uh, you know, he's a good quarterback. I actually talked with uh, Chris Anderson from Ear Sports our uh, brother over there on the 24-7 Sports Network who does a great job. He actually helped out inside the Red Raiders in one of the tournament games, I think in Boston back in the day, uh, with some really great uh, insight during that game when we, when we weren't there. Uh, but Chris said, look, JT Daniels is one of the more consistent throwers that West Virginia's had in a long time, but he's not a big threat to run, especially compared to some of the guys that Tech's already faced. Uh, like, he's definitely no Spencer Sanders. Uh, but, and he's not very good necessarily at throwing on the run. He's inconsistent at throwing on the run. But, look, if you give him time in the pocket, he's got some targets he can get the ball out to, some big targets, and uh, he can do some damage with his arms. So, well, what do you think about uh, JT Daniels and the West Virginia offense? Yeah, I think that uh, assessment is as accurate as it should be. He knows, right. he, he follows him, he should be right. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I think uh, he's probably the best quarterback that, I've seen from West Virginia in quite some time. I mean, and they've kind of like Texas Tech uh, since Pat Mahomes. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. hadn't been a whole lot of, you know, just stellar quarterbacks lately. Will and Greer's really the last one I thought, I know. man, that was like a pretty really good. good player. You know, yeah, quarterback. and I think uh, Daniels is certainly of that caliber. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with him. He's better than I actually thought he was going to be. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, they got, I think they got a good running back by the name of Tony Mathis as well. Mm -hmm. he, he's a typical kind of West Virginia back, a really tough runner, yeah. uh, just kind of a hard guy. You're not going to arm tackle these guys, even though he's not a huge back. Uh, he can break some tackles, and uh, he'll he'll be a a threat as well. So I mean, uh, that offense is uh, it's got some weapons, and it's going to be a challenge. I think it's funny you mentioned the typical West Virginia back and being tough and everything. I think it's to me, I find it interesting that programs get cultures and their yeah. whole, like, I mean, athletic programs yeah. to where the football team is a certain way, the basketball team is a certain way. I mean, when you think of West Virginia, you think of, you know, a team that's that's scrappy, yeah. you know, and any sport, you know, the baseball team, I think, is, is always seems down to fight too, even, you know what I mean? Yeah. Football team, certainly in the basketball team, you know, uh, under Huggins has been one of the tougher programs in the Big 12, and that's saying something, Joe. Uh, but let's get to the prediction. How do you see this game playing out? What does Tech have to do to get uh, the dub? <coughs> well, um, you know, Tech is favored, I believe, by seven was the last yeah. I saw. And I think that's spot on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really do. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, uh, you know, I, my prediction is 36-29 Tech. Uh, and, you know, as I said, I, I think it's what it's going to really come down to for the most part is what Tech's offensive line can do in terms of pass protection and can Baron Morton, assuming he starts, uh, avoid the inevitable pressure that he's going to face. I yeah. mean, even if we get some improvement out of the offensive line, look, there's still going to be times where he's got to bail, you know, right. and make the right decisions. And, you know, I, I think if that phase of the game works for Texas Tech, uh, then uh, Tech is going to, to win this game. And I think actually it could be a game uh, where the margin of victory is actually less than the, the, the what am I trying to say? It's, In the eye test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's maybe not as close as the final score indicates. I, right. I think maybe Tech can run out and get a little bit of a lead and then West Virginia come back a little bit in the fourth quarter and make it a little bit closer than it really is. Uh, so that's kind of the way I see it shaping up. All right, great stuff, Monty Joe. 2 p.m. Saturday, Texas Tech versus West Virginia here at the Jones. Thank you for watching, and until next time.